Hey folks, this video is going to cover transaction managers. Uh, we deal a lot with EDI here, so you know transaction managers have to do with uh, finding different types of EDI transactions, but uh, they can do a lot more than that. And quite frankly, I'm making this video because I don't know that this content is anywhere on the market. Uh, a lot of times when you hear transaction managers, everybody says, well, you know, look to this provider or, or, or that vendor. Uh, but they really are not comparing apples to apples. And so this video is going to um, add some clarity to what a transaction manager is down to some specifics. So I think that you'll enjoy this. And uh, especially if you're in the market for a transaction manager, uh, these these are quite expensive. I mean, you, you could probably blow half a million dollars on a transaction manager, or you could get one a lot less. The key to, um, I think, understanding what a transaction manager is, is the user. And so let's jump in. Uh, what is a transaction manager? Uh, there are transaction managers that are used for provider support. There are transaction managers used for analytics. There are transaction managers used for claim adjudication system support. A lot of words on that last thing, but uh, I, I will tell you quite frankly that some of the best, most robust, fancy claim adjudication systems out there are absolutely garbage when it comes to trying to retrieve claims. They put all their eggs in one basket. That means adjudicating the claim, and that's a very complex process. It is, especially if you try to make something that's scalable, you know, or they'll have something that's almost impossible to install, uh, but then it works well, or vice versa. Uh, and so there's a real need uh, around claim adjudication system support. Uh, and that's just one of them. So let's go through each of these separately, one by one. Um, if your transaction manager is for analytics, then you're going to have probably upper level management that needs to know, you know, what uh, what is really happening with the success and failure of these transactions. They'll look at healthcare claims. They'll look at 277CAs. Uh, there's a real serious problem with not being able to find the 999s because they don't link as well. Uh, part of that is because of how the 999 is built. Uh, but an analytics transaction manager uh, will deal a lot with dashboards and trending because managers or upper management need to know, uh, you know, what the uh, success of, of, of the payer, for example, how are they doing this week, you know. Uh, they don't necessarily need to look at the raw data because they wouldn't know what to do with it if they saw it. Uh, also, and, and this is another big one that I run into, especially other companies in tech companies will actually uh, hire me to do some consulting, and they start getting hung up on looking up a specific transaction, and I have to stop them and say, listen, you're building an analytics TM. And, you, you know, if, if you, you know, have a certain air threshold where you're getting only 98% of your claims or something like that, that's not a big deal. It's analytics. You need to identify those anom anomalies so that they can be researched. But I understand your goal is to look at trending uh, on an aggregate scale on, on an overall scale. So very different needs there. If you're looking at, for example, provider supported transaction manager it's quite a bit different the the it's almost opposite of an analytics uh, they have to know exactly uh, they have to have a, a specific transaction lookup you can't have 98 percent you know success if it's a provider supported transaction manager you have to have a hundred percent and a lot more than that you also need if it's a quality TM it should hook up like the uh, 277CA, and then uh, beyond that, uh, nice to have would be uh, the audits or the 999s or even TA1s. So um, that's the difference between those two. If you go on to a claim supported transaction manager, um, the reason why this sort of transaction manager exists 
is because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, a lot of, of the claim adjudication uh, giants out there uh, perform horribly, you know, when it comes to looking up claims. So I'll give you an example. I, I think I've mentioned this before. You know, you start looking at claims in some of these uh, large systems and you'll go through 50 screens and you can't do simple lookups, you know, like where you're looking up a patient ID, you know, or even if you have the total dollar amount, you know, and uh, the MPI and member ID and all these other details, you still have, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of records you have to go through. That sounds insane, but uh, that really happens. So this is, uh, I think, a distinction uh, on what a transaction manager is. Uh, I think when it comes to cost, uh, I think that there's a lot to be said. You don't have to spend a half a million dollars on a transaction manager if you have only a specific function. Um, you know, I, I have worked on these and uh, the company I work for is, has sold transaction managers and uh, you know, they, you know, some of them can get expensive but they don't have to be. You know, if, if, um, if you're a payer and you need a solution for a transaction manager that's very specific, that's something that can be customized. But it starts with understanding what the needs of the user is. Um, so uh, that, that's probably one of the most important distinctions. So um, that's uh, my video on transaction managers. I hope that it's uh, helped you out. If you have any questions or concerns, you can uh, leave your comments below or you can send me an email to edi.dallas at Zoho or please stop by uh, our domain, remorebay.com, and, uh, and you can uh, connect with, with us there at that point as well. Thank you.